Okay, we're going to start over here. like that. Isn't that wonderful? Man, to hear the Lord calling your name. Come, Joseph. Oh. Woo. like the boys at camp when they tell the kids sometimes, you know, they're singing songs and they're doing this and it's just like <laughs> when you hear your name, it's like, oh man, that's really going to be great. Something's the matter with you, man. <laughs> oh, what's singing, what shouting when he calls our name and he tells us we'll be gathered in spending the eternity together with one another. No more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more heartaches. No, all this stuff we have to go, all this garbage that have to go through, we're with him throughout eternity. Praise him. That's what we're here for tonight. That's what we're here for tonight. of the Lord is seated. How wonderful that is. No one can sing that like the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're the ones that can really sing it because it's really going to happen. It's a reality. Amen. We want to welcome everybody for here and uh, many strangers that we have here and of course all the ones that we have across around the world that's on the hookup. And we just heard last Sunday it was that you know when Moses brought his message and he came into Egypt. They come from all around everywhere into Goshen Amen. to listen to what that prophet had to say. Amen. And that's what we're doing here tonight, the exact same thing. We come from everywhere to hear what that prophet's going to say tonight to us. Amen. the name of the Lord. How exciting is that? <clears throat> Have you come today, tonight, prayed up, Amen. expecting? Amen. You know, Brother Bram says, if you don't come expecting, you ain't going to get nothing. You're going to get exactly with what you expect. I hope your expectations are really high tonight. Because if they're really high and they're under expectations, and you're prayed up and you're ready, Amen. more than any other night, it should be right here. He said, this was the showdown right here. Amen. He says that we go and we examine our lives and we look and to make sure that there's nothing there. Because, and he said, I love how he says on this message, yeah. it's the last thing the children of Israel did before they went into the promised land. <laughs> Woo! Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Let's just go in the promised land. Hey. Praise the Lord. Are you enjoying your new prayer life? Amen. Hey, man. You know, somebody might say, I've had a prayer life. Well, it should be greater tonight than it ever has been because that we are under a whole different level now. We're under great expectations. We're in desperation. That's where we should be. He said, you have to get desperate. And he says, when you get desperate, that's when God comes on the scene. Only desperate, desperate prayers is to come up. And there's where we should be. I mean, who's tired of walking in the wilderness? Okay, all of you that didn't raise your hand, you can stay here. The rest of you, we want to go. here I want. Amen. Who wants 
blessed to be Amram and Yoshebed. Amen. Amen. I love it. He says that they were, he said he came back and he was in desperation. He was tired. He was wore out. He said, but somebody has to do it. Amen. Somebody's got to do it. And I want that to be me. You want that to be you. Lord, I want that to be me. I want that to be my prayer life. I want to be, that's what I think about all the time. It's all I think about. There ain't nothing else to think about. He says, because then I want to be just like him, and I want to look on the corner of my room, and I want to see the angel of the Lord standing there. That's what I want, and that's what we all want. How did everybody like Wednesday night home prayer meeting? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> You believe everything happens for a reason? Amen. Amen. The bride of Jesus Christ. It's so easy to talk to people that love the message and know what that prophet said and believe it with all their heart. Amen. Everything happens for a reason, and God's timing is perfect. Amen. It's never off. We're off, but his timing's never off. That's why we just got to get in the plan of God, Amen. and that happens by prayer life. That message can be up here, the knowledge, but it has to go from here down to here. Amen. You have to put it into action. You've got to put this word into action and believe it. And it was, it was Wednesday night as I put in the letter to you folks that, and which is, let me announce this real quick. If any of you don't signed up and that you don't, we don't have your phone numbers to receive our emails or texts is when we have service or cancel service or we send out a letter, make sure to give that to the deacons so that they can have it and you can receive that. <clears throat> but anyway, I was just praying, and I was really looking forward to Wednesday night service. It's always a special treat I love. Thank the Lord that he's given us this place, that we can come together and be comfortable, and he provided us a place. Amen. Amen. But there's no place like the tabernacle. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. And I really wanted to go to the tabernacle. I was just looking forward just to being there and to fellowship with one another and to hear the word. And it is, it's a special place. And the Lord knows that when we're together listening to the word, wherever we listen to the word is wonderful. But it is a special place. And I was missing you. And then we'd been to camp and I'd really started just praying about it. And it just seemed like it just dead in, dead in, dead in. And I don't like to have that feelings when I'm talking to the Lord. It's like, Lord, what, what, what am I missing? What, 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 what is it, Lord? And all I could feel inside of me was, I told you, pray. Pray. And I just kept praying. It's like, Lord, is that what you want the people to do is to pray? Pray. So I give you the letter and told you, let's stay home and let's pray. Amen. Seek the Lord. Come together as a family. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. And Brother Branham talks about it tonight. It's what the Lord has us doing right now. And if you can't see this and what he's saying and what's going on, he is telling us right now, <clears throat> prepare ourselves. He said, you know what? We can talk too much, which I do a whole lot of. We can sing too much. We can do everything too much. But he said, you cannot pray too much. He says, constantly being in the prayer with one another. So I don't know if any of you is the confirmation that he does. He's confirmed it to us in these last couple years is thanking the Lord is how his timing and perfect and what he wants and what he wants done on what day, what tape that he wants played on what day, Amen. and how he can on Sunday give a tape and we're listening 64 and then play Wednesday night at 57 and it sounds like they're back to back. That's our Lord. gives the bride little things like that to encourage us to let us know just a little thing it, it's it's good just when he does he just likes us to let us know well thursday morning and i don't know if any of you had heard this or not he confirmed to us on thursday that we did the right thing Amen. he did and it was right there for the world to see and it's a come on and right after the quote of the day we put in what tape was played on this day and on that message, Brother Branham says, 
Yes, I've been watching them all night. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Amen. I've watched them all night long. I heard them in their prayer meeting last night. coincidence <laughs> not to the bride there is no such thing as a coincidence we're predestinated what he says and it happens and it continues I heard them when they prayed through and they struck heaven here we struck heaven amen with their prayers he says I'm watching them I know when they've got one more step to go He says, I've been watching him all night long. Praise the name of the Lord. What a confirmation to us once again that he does. He's mindful into doing that we're doing what he wants us to do. And I believe that is, should encourage us. He is. And when he watches what we're doing, that prayer, it is like he told us in Amram and Yoshebed. He was tired. He was wore out. It's hard to do and to keep pressing on. We get that thing that you can't break through. You can't break through. Something's going on. The kids are doing this. This is going on here. You got to do this. All the distractions. Amen? Amen. It's hard because there's so many voices that are talking, trying to narrow it all down to hear that one voice. And Amen. forgive me as I've probably told a lot of you this in this illustration real quick that <clears throat> How that the Lord is so wonderful is that the Lord will take just a second if we'll give him anything. But he's watching when you're sitting there and you're trying to break through. Don't pressure, pressure, pressure. Just sit there and say, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord, and I want to be in your presence, and there's nothing like being in your presence. I want to talk, even if you don't even say anything to me, Lord. I just love you, Lord. I want to worship you. I want to tell you how wonderful you are. Lord, I just adore you, and what a privilege it is that I can be on my knees to talk to you, Lord. How that you're right here, you're listening to me, Lord. You don't have to. No, I want you to just feel a little breeze in your heart to come and buy. Good enough. It's good enough. <laughs> and that's the same way is that he'll take any second that we'll give him. We'll take any second that he'll give us. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to go that one more step. We don't know what that is, but that is, is the more that we push, the more we're into the word, the more that we're going to check, the more that we get desperate before the Lord, the more that we apply that token. The very thing that he told us about. This is the age of the token. Amen. He says never before in history could it be until the end time. Amen. Until right now, he said that that token. He Amen. said it is the literal life of Jesus Christ returned back into the believer. Amen. Oh. Amen. oh my goodness. The literal life. Praise the Lord, you see. That means you're the living word is living in you. That living word living in us. He said it is the token. What is the token? He says, that's the message of the hour. Amen. That's the message of this day. That's the message of this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive it. We've received it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if this is the message of the day, the token, 
God will only recognize the token. Amen. He says that's the only thing that he'll recognize. It was like saying the other day, you know, you look up a meaning of a word and there's explanation, 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 explanation. But that's the bottom line for the end time. There's all these explanations. It is the Lord Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is the message of the hour. Yes. So the message of the hour is the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> that is the token. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. In our, he said that the story that he tells us, he said Rab, Rahab, he was a type of the bride today. Amen. She represented just the type of the bride today. You know, I was thinking, you know, it's so amazing that when Joshua, he sent the two messengers, we'll get to that, he sent those two messengers into Jericho. What did that benefit him? Nothing. In the natural, it benefited him nothing at all. It was only one thing to happen. It was calling out a bride. <laughs> it was just calling out a bride. We don't even know if Joshua knew what he was doing or not because as soon as he sent them two in there, the angel of the Lord, God himself, come to him and told him what he would do. So they didn't, the way to get in is tactic the way in to get in or anything else. He just had to come, they get a bride before the destruction come. And what happened? So what did she do? We know. He goes, well, some tape boys slipped in here. That's what them two messengers did. He said that she made her house a church to receive the message. I know I've repeated that many times, but that's for the bride. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So what did she have to do? She had to show her token. You know what? Said, I'm a tape church. He says the token was on her house when the rest of the city shook to the ground. Amen. What was it? What was it? Joshua, the messenger of God, God himself Amen. recognized his messenger's message. Amen. There it is. Praise the Lord. So then God had to recognize his messenger's messenger. That was the token. That's what he recognized. It was the message. He says it proves it. It proved they recognized, they recognized the message. He recognized his messenger's message. And when all the rest of the city shook down, they there stood Rahab's scarlet token over the door and the rest of them was gone. I'd say it is real important to say that we are a tape church. Amen. Real important. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want that thread hanging out. Amen. Amen. Let me say a little something. Every church in this message, if you claim to believe this message, want to or not, you're a tape church. If you believe this message, you're a tape church. It's just the way it is. You are a tape church. We are a real tape church. Amen. Praise the Lord. He also told us 
the true way of a five-fold ministry. He did. Which I believe, by the grace of God, I'm part of that five-fold ministry. I believe it. I believe in a true five-fold ministry. There has to be a true five-fold ministry. There's men of God that have true callings of God on their lives. That believe this message with all their heart. They preach this message with all their heart. They believe it. They believe this message is the absolute. Now you've got a true fivefold minister has got to believe this message is an absolute. This end time message. He just said it was the token, which is the Holy Spirit. It is this message. So it has to be your absolute. But they got to catch the vision. You got to play the tapes. You've got to. Amen. Praise the Lord. They're the token. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. Now, when you say that, and this is going to bring a lot of controversy, and the devil's been really beating me up on this. You know, when they say you got to believe the fivefold ministry, they throw it in a big bucket. You got to believe the fivefold ministry. I do. But there's true and there's false of everything. There is a true fivefold and there's a false fivefold. If I believe, you got to believe in the fivefold ministry. Some preachers believe that we're in the millennium and they preach it. We're in the millennium right now. We're living in the millennium. Jesus already come when it was, when the seal's broken and it is all this and we've got some doctrines. There's some that believe I can be married and divorced and still preach the message of the hour. I can have another wife. Well, the Lord forgive me. She really didn't believe it. They believe, they preach it and say they preach this message. There's some that preach the doctrine of perusia. You've heard perusia. It's lots of ministries preach that. There's some that preach the seven thunders, the doctrine of the seven thunders. They take out from what Brother Branham said, and it's become a doctrine amongst the church. And there's many, 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 many preachers of the five-fold ministry, preachers, teachers, apostles, prophets, that preach that doctrine. There's many that preach polygamy. It's big in Africa. Our brother's from Africa in here. It's a big deal in Africa. And you know what they use? Marriage and divorce book. That's how they prove polygamy doctrine is through the marriage and divorce book. No matter what you tell them, they preach it. And there's a lot of them that preaches it. There's some that say it's got mistakes in this message. Now, there's a lot of them that says that. There's a lot that says that. It says, oh, that 22 bullet couldn't do that. It can't go that fast. It would melt. It disintegrate. It can't happen. Eagles came from no, the highest flying bird. He's not the highest flying bird, that there's other birds that do that. Now, that's not the correct date. When Brother Branham says the angel of the Lord come down on this date, that isn't the correct date. It was happened this, and it happened this way, and it happened that way. Wow. That's what they say. There's many of them out there. I'm sure you've all heard those type of things. What was the very commission that God said? What was it? Get the people to believe you. <laughs> commission by saying that. He didn't say what? The angel of the Lord get to people to believe you. Amen. So we don't care what says on them tapes. We believe it. Amen. I don't have to explain it. I don't have to understand it. I just got to Amen. believe it. Amen. 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 Some say the fivefold ministry will perfect the bride of Jesus Christ, not the tapes. Which one of them? Which group of them? Which one of them that it's going to be? It's all and all together. You've got to hear the tapes. You have to hear the tapes. 
that you don't know what the truth is unless you listen to the tapes. Of course, we believe, and I do truly believe, it's like, how do you know that polygamy is not right, the thunders are not right, Perugia is not right, the millennium is not right, or anything else, unless you're in the Word. Amen. And in this day and time, people are not in the Word. We're tape people, and it's hard. It's hard. It doesn't, oh, I listen to tapes all the time, driving down the car and going, oh, i got to go get groceries. Oh, I need to go get gas. i got to hear it back and back. Just sit down and stay hours and to concentrate and listen to the Word. Amen. But when we're together, united, under the Holy Spirit... That word comes alive. Amen. Did you hear that prophet the other night after he preached the token halfway through about an hour and a half? And he goes, now I can stop here if you want me to, but the anointing is Amen. here would be a good time to continue on. Amen. Amen. That's a good one for don't break up the tapes, play them. <laughs> Just play them. I want to stay under the anointing when the anointing's just right. Prophet God even said, even when he prayed, you hear him at the end. He says, I'll wait to pray over these prayer calls and the hankies until the anointing is right at the peak. Amen. Right at that's where I want to be. I want to be right when it's at the peak. And you have to get underneath that anointing and to do it. And there's no substitute for coming together like this and listening to the word together. The Holy Spirit moves that anointing. There is no greater anointing than Amen. when it's coming from the voice of God. Amen. None and none. Amen. 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 You may be seated. So he did tell us on the token the correct way for the fivefold, and it's in two parts. I read this the other night, so I'm sorry to bear with me that you know this quote, but it just jumped out to me. He said, the word Joshua means, Joshua means Savior. So does Jesus mean Savior. And Joshua, when he knowed his messengers, we just talked about the messengers. His messengers were what? Fivefold ministry. They were his fivefold ministry. They were his messengers. You say, he didn't say that. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see if he didn't say it or not. They returned back and said, I have obeyed your orders. Ooh, man. Joshua, the representation of the Holy Spirit's Savior, give them orders and told them exactly what to do. That fivefold ministry went in there being told what to do. Excuse me, sorry. And there was a woman we found when we played the tapes. Amen. Okay, he says, we found a woman that believed. So there, okay, okay. And he says, we told her, we told her that all that would come under the red sign back there, the token, what it would mean. Now I have preached that. That's what the messengers just said. I preach that. Amen. So that's the fivefold ministry. Amen. Right there. Amen. Amen. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. He says they had preached that. What did the true fivefold ministry preach? What did they preach? Get under the message. Yeah. They said, get under the message, display your token, or you'll perish. Yeah. And, and then when they did that, then they played her a tape. 
That's what five full minutes is supposed to do. saw that the other day is something is talking about listening to the token three or four times at least before coming to service the other night then we listened to it together there and I had that highlighted and I went home and it just there it is right there he says exactly what to do he tells them what to do what they went in and did we went in and preached it now we've preached that we preached it we told her we played the tapes and then they come back and said they come to him his preachers and they come to Joshua and they said Will you honor that, Joshua? What was the answer? I sent you to do it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. But there's something even more important than it is in that that is today that we just can't say that we're Tate people. Amen. Those are words. He says, you got to live the life. Amen. That's, that's the key right there. Did you hear him? He says, well, I go to church. Don't mean that. I listen to the message. Don't mean that. Amen. I, I'm trying to live a good life and trying to live for the Lord. Don't mean that. He said, you got to apply that token. Amen. That token has to be inside of you. That word has to be inside of you. He says that the world has to see that token displayed in front of you. You want the whole world to see the token, that message living in you. Amen. It's not words, it's a life. But the prophet warned us, he said, what are we doing? I mean, on the token, he's the greatest message, and he tells us tonight that he preached. He says, he warned us, he says, quit your fussing. Wow, that really struck me. He says, quit your fussing with one another. He says, pray for one another. Amen. Quit the fussing and pray for one another. But we keep judging people. We keep condemning people. It's in our nature that we do it. I'm guilty. You might not be, but I'm guilty of doing it, of judging and condemning people. And it's, oh my goodness, did you hear what they're doing? I just can't believe. Look at her dress. Did you see her come to church in that dress? It was so tight on her. I mean, I, it was, I can't believe it. Do you know where they went for their vacation? Oh, they're doing that. Oh, it's my God. It's unbelievable. It's just, it's unbelievable. They have such an attitude. They've got just such an attitude. They're so smirking. Is it the truth? It's the truth. What it is they're doing, you know. We need to get desperate. Pray for those people. Not condemn them. He said, pray for one another. We get desperate and pray for one another. When they're falling down, when they're making mistakes, when they're not doing. Who are we? We're supposed to be praying for them. When you get down on your knees and you start praying for people, something changes in your life. If you've ever experienced that, it's the greatest thing there is when you start praying for somebody else. And here comes the biggie. <laughs> Did you hear they don't stream? They actually go to Nathan Bryant's church. They're out. They're out. If they're not streaming. Yeah, I thought it would be pretty quiet. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. You don't see it my way, it's the highway. You don't see it that this is it. I believe this is the truth. Do I want the world streaming? Praise the name of the Lord. I want them to hear the message of the hour. Not Joseph Branham. I want them to hear the message of the hour. But they're doing what they feel led of the Lord to do. We're doing what we feel led of the Lord to do. This is what we feel is the will of God for us to do. 
They have to do what they feel led of the Lord to do. We don't condemn them. Brother Branham said, love them. Love one another. Pray for them. Not in, in sincerity is praying out before the Lord. That's my brother and sister. If Brother Branham enough that he said, be praying for the Methodists, the Baptists, and the Presbyterians. Did he say that? He told us to do that. Pray for them out there. How much more for somebody that claims to believe the message of the hour? They love this message. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. When we put that in to practice, then that's getting desperate. The Lord will bring us together, unite us together. We don't know who is and who isn't. I just worry about me. We're so busy worrying about everybody else. Just worry about me. And I want to be desperate. And that's what he's teaching us tonight. If we get desperate, God will truly move on the scene as if we do. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me read you a quote. What Brother Branham said the other night on the token. Now, you people that's listening to this on tape, he's talking to us. Amen. You women, you men, listening a minute, if you ever believe me, you believe me now. Amen. That's pretty strong words coming from the prophet of God. Amen. If you believe me, believe me now. It's time to quit fussing with one another. Amen. Believe the message of the Bible. Believe Jesus Christ and love and honor and respect one another. Men, respect your wives. You respect your homes. Listen to this. Bring your homes together because remember, this lamb was for the home, not just one, but for the whole to be brought in. Amen. Amen. That's prayer meetings. That's why we're having prayer meetings. Get our homes together, our families together. Everything had to be brought in. We should love one another. We should, believers, should separate ourselves from the world. Notice, they were not just yet, they were not just come together to talk about the message. They come together to apply the blood, the apply the token. And that's what is here, we're here for tonight, is to come to apply the token. That life. Who wants more of that life? Amen. We're going to have a wonderful opportunity here tonight. I'm sorry for talking so much and that, as I always tell you, I love the message, but the most important part is to come to hear the word. And if we've come prepared to hear the word, God's going to do wonderful things for us tonight. And we say it's another red letter night. It is another red letter night. Because when you come together and you get to hear the word, it is a red letter night for the bride. And it's not by coincidence that's the Lord. And I did not pick this message just by because of the things Brother Branham says on here tonight to play it tonight. It was God, I believe it, that he ordained it to be played tonight. And what a time we have communion. What a time. But Brother Branham does, he gives us a wonderful opportunity tonight. And that is to pray for one another. The very thing that he told us to do, that which we need to do more of, we need to pray for one another. Brother Branham calls a prayer line in this service, and it's about paragraph 175 is where he comes up, and it's about 15 or 18 minutes long where the prayer line comes up. I want us to have a prayer line. I want us to have a chain prayer line. I want us to lay hands on one another. A chain that comes in that we have the token. Do you have the token? If you have that a token, he says, come before Father, showing that token with your prayers, and God will answer your prayer tonight. And let's lay hands on one another through that prayer line. And our prayer line is the person next to you, and then the person next to you. And you pray for that person that's sitting next to you. Let's get desperate for one another. Let's get desperate and pray for that person next to us. That's what the prophet told us to do. Desperation sets in. Let's start praying. Help my brother. Help my sister. Help us, Lord. We want the coming of the Lord. We're looking for the rapture. We're here to get ready. Whatever it's going to take. Do you want to do whatever it's going to take? 
whatever it takes, Lord, that's what I want in my life to do in it. And what will happen? This is what he said. He said it are to electrify this place. He says it would be like a match to a barrel of powder. Praise the name of the Lord. It are to explode the faith and love and desperation, drive them people right into the kingdom of God to believe with all their heart. Do you believe it? Yes. Amen. Let's stand. That's what I want. Set us on fire tonight, Lord Jesus. As we bow our heads and we want to welcome him to come here to be with us tonight. We know that he's already here with us. Each one of us bring him with us because of that token. What a wonderful privilege it is to be able to display that token tonight. That life that lives within us. Truly the desire of our heart, Lord, is to be more like you. And that's what the only thing that we want to do as we hear this message tonight is, Lord, to get desperate. We need to quit fooling around. Whatever it is, the Lord's brought us on this journey. We feel it. Do you feel closer to him tonight? Can you say, Lord, I feel closer to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm more like you, Lord. But I want to be more like you. How about that? Raise your hand and say, Lord, I want to be more like you, Lord. Lord, I don't even know what I have need of. You know what I have need of, and Lord, give it to me, Lord. Whatever I have need of, Lord, to be more like you. Because you're coming for a bride, Lord Jesus. I want to live this message, Lord. I just don't want to try. I want it to be in me. I want it to be every fiber of my body. I want him to come down and fill me afresh with his Holy Spirit. I want to pray for my brother tonight. I want to pray with all my heart in desperation, holding my token up. Lord, help us as a group of people, your bride. Around the world, join together in prayer, believing and praying for one another. And we believe God's going to move on the scene. He's going to renew that tonight. Listen to the prophet. He's talking directly.